Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Viewing audiences, this is the sixth session of the third lectures on spirit, soul, and body, and I will continue with the works of the flesh. Today's scripture tells us that those who commit works of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God, namely, they cannot be saved. It is only through faith in Jesus Christ that we can receive salvation. So if we commit the works of the flesh, professing that we believe in God and the Lord, it is the proof that we do not have faith to receive salvation. If you truly believe that Jesus died miserably on the cross because of your sins, you cannot stay in sins anymore. Although we cannot throw away all sins at once, if we truly have faith and love the Lord, we'll definitely try to get rid of sins as soon as possible. I hope that you will throw away all kinds of works of the flesh and even the root of your evil that is deep inside you through this message. May all of you become holy and pure ch children of light who can receive blessings and answers for everything you ask from the Father God in the name of the Lord I pray. Viewing audiences, members of over 4,400 branch churches in Korea and in all of the world, and local sanctuary members, and those who are attending a service on the internet all over the world, and children of Sunday school, and television viewing audiences. Today I will explain about heresies, envy, drunkenness, and revelries. First, heresy is a group that looks like Christianity but actually is completely different. Major heretic divisions today are Unification Church, Heavenly Father's Church, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, which is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Other than these, there are many heresies all over the world. It is very important to know about heretic groups. They claim to believe in God and have a similar form of church, so believers might get deceived by them. But no matter how similar doctrines they have, they actually have wrong doctrines that have nothing to do with salvation. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 says, But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Heretic doctrines are some other gospel than true gospel, and those who preach or accept them will surely fall into destruction. That is why Titus chapter 3 verse 10 says, Reject a divisive man after the first and second admonition. It is telling us that we should not even stay close to him so that we will not be deceived. By the way, in another sense, if we condemn a church as a heresy, although it is not actually heretic, it is also a great sin. Furthermore, if we condemn as heresy a church filled with the powerful works of the Holy Spirit, or a pastor who manifests God's power, it is standing against God. It is to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, and it cannot be forgiven. Today, so many people condemn others only because they have different opinion without knowing the correct meaning of heresy. 
I hope you will clearly understand the meaning of heresy so that you will not either be deceived or condemn others wrongly and stand against God. If you hear from somebody who does not exactly know about heresies, saying some church or some pastor is heretical, please do not listen to them. Now let us look into what heresy is. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 says, But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them. The Lord shed His own blood to buy us. and bring on themselves swift destruction. Therefore, heresy is to deny Jesus Christ the Savior. Heresy is to deny the Lord who bought us, namely, to deny Jesus Christ the Savior. Some heretical groups claim that Jesus is not the Son of God. Some others say Jesus failed to become the Savior because He died on the cross or because He did not fulfill the ministry of salvation completely. There needs to be another Savior. Then they claim the founder of their group or sect is the Savior or God Himself. It is quite difficult to understand those who are deceived by these people. If He is God, you know God is Almighty. And does that person create something? They should be able to create things with their word. They can't even do it. But people believe they are God. Later, some of them get serious disease and die. Then the followers wait for that person to resurrect. It's quite difficult to understand those who are deceived like that. If you just properly understand the message of the cross, there is no reason you will be deceived. This book, Message of the Cross, has been translated into many languages and are being spread to the whole world. Many people will be able to read it. And many people from many countries want this book. For example, do you all know the four qualifications as the Savior and why only Jesus meets all four qualifications? First, the Savior must be a man. Only mankind has the right to redeem other men from their sins. That is why Jesus, who is God Himself, had to come to this earth in physical body. Therefore, you will not be deceived when heretical people say, Jesus is not God because He came as a man. Rather, you can let them realize that Jesus had to come as a man, although He is the Son of God. Second, he must not have original sin. All men have inherited original sin from their parents and ancestors, but Jesus had no original sin because he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was not conceived by the union of sperm and egg, but only by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he had the qualification to forgive the sinners of their sins. Third, he has to have the spiritual power. Only Jesus has the power to save all mankind because he neither had original sin nor committed any other sin. From the moment he was born and until he was crucified, he did not commit any sins but only lived by God's law. That's why he has the power to redeem other people. If you know these facts, you don't have to be deceived when others say 
somebody else than Jesus is the Savior. That's why it's said, there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. We are saved only through Jesus Christ, but nowadays, religions are compromising with each other. Some of them say there is salvation in another religion too. But you should never be deceived by these people. Fourth, he must have love. Only then will he be able to take the suffering of the cross and die for sinners. According to the spiritual law that dictates wages of sin is death, we who are sinners had to fall into death. But Jesus died on the cross with love to pay the price and purchase our lives. He became our Savior in that way. Therefore, it is not that He failed to save mankind because He died as some heretic groups say, but He fulfilled the providence of salvation by dying. Those who say they believe in God but deny Jesus Christ the Savior are all false prophets and liars. First John chapter 2 verses 22 to 23 say, Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? Liar is the one who denies Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Those who he acknowledges the Son, namely those who acknowledge that Jesus is our Savior, have the Father also. Also, 1 John chapter 2, verse 2 to 3 says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Do you believe that the only begotten Son of God Jesus came to this earth in flesh? Every spirit that accepts this belongs to God, not to the devil. If they belong to the devil, they cannot accept it. This spirit is of God, and every spirit that, do that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. You heard of Antichrist many times. Now you can distinguish correctly what Antichrist is, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. If you keep these words in mind deeply, you can break down any kind of deception with the word. I hope you will cl clearly understand the truth and be awake by the Holy Spirit so that you will be able to discern everything with truth. There are so many people who, without even knowing why Jesus Christ is a Savior, condemn others as heretics. I testify to why only Jesus is our Savior in many places around the world. So many pastors kneel down, kneel down before the message. They think this true gospel is in the Bible, but why have I not understood it? They don't understand even if it's in the Bible but they judge some other people as heretical. But when I preach these messages, so many people are awakened, repent, and convert into Christianity, and many pastors kneel down with emotions. Then you will not be deceived by heresies, and you will not turn to the right or left by any kind of deceiving words. Next, let us look into envy. Envy is to act evil to others due to excessive jealousy. When I explained about uncleanness, I said unclean things may be caused by too much envy. There were many incidents of like this in Korean history. 
The women in the palace were jealous of the queen and concubines, harmed the princes born of other women, and made schemes and so on. They even used sorceries, slandered and tried to entrap other women they hated. This kind of thing happened through the history. If an excellent minister was loved by the king, he soon became an object of jealousy. Other ministers made plots to make him resign or to kill him. Whether they were the prime ministers or other ministers, most of them were once exiled, or many of them were put to death. But only after some time, their innocence was revealed and that they were wrongfully accused. But only after they were already put to death. How many of them were not beaten? This happens around the world. Even in Korean history, from the early ages of Chosun dynasty to the last king, there was so much envy and jealousy among the women in the palace. As far as I know, there was no single king who didn't have problems due to the women in the palace. How about Song Jong who is considered to be a sage king? Even at his time, there was conflict between his mother and his wife, namely between the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law. Only because there was a little bit of cut by nail on king's face, the first queen was driven out of the palace, and finally she was sentenced to death due to wrongful accusation. That's why her son became such a tyrant and killed so many people. In Chinese history, there was a horrible incident caused by envy. When the emperor loved his concubine and her son more than the queen and the crown prince, the queen was so jealous and had a very evil mind. She waited for the emperor to die to take the revenge against the concubine and her son. When the emperor finally died and her son became the emperor, the queen caught that concubine, cut off all her limbs and even the tongue. She did not kill her because she wanted to be crueler in taking her revenge. She let the concubine live and put her in a pig pen. She treated the concubine just like a pig, giving her food only enough for her to survive. Then she showed it to her son, the new emperor, very proudly. But the new emperor was so surprised and sad, and he tried to save his brother, born of the concubine. He put his brother next to him all the time, even when dining or sleeping. But the queen was always watching for an opportunity and when the emperor was absent just for a while, she killed the son of the concubine. For those who have good conscience, these things are too miserable even to talk about. But if people are possessed with envy, they can do such things that are no better than animals having the form of human being. But the problem is, that this kind of horrible envy comes from the same root as jealousy. If you have even a little bit of jealousy and envy in you, which is not to rejoice with truth, I urge you to get rid of it completely right now. If this jealousy and envy meets the work of Satan, and faces a certain kind of situation, it can come out, come out as evil envy. Next, let us look into drunkenness. If a person gets drunk, he cannot control himself, and he cannot see what is right and what is wrong. 
he would not follow holiness with self-control, but act according to the sinful nature. They do some strange things, keep on shouting, or have fights without feeling shameful. They urinate on the street, whether there are women around or not. They just sleep on the street or on benches in parks. They sometimes say words and commit actions which they must not have done and cause some irreversible things. So because of getting drunk, they make mistakes in words and have enmity with other people and have ill feelings against each other. The Talmud says, if the Satan is too busy to come to men, they send alcohol instead. Actually in Israel, water is very scarce. That is why they drink wine, which they fermented, without putting any alcohol. It was not to get drunk, but to drink as some beverage. In Germany, the water mostly has compounds of calcium. So they cannot drink that water. That's why beer is famous in Germany. They drink it instead of water. It is not to get drunk, but to quench the thirst. For Israelites, it was to take water. The people of Israel drank wine like this, but it does not mean that God allowed them to get drunk. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 31 says, Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swells around smoothly. It is red and when it sparkles in the cup, when it swells around smoothly, do not even look at it. I hate it anyway. Well, the little cup for the Holy Communion tastes very good. But I can't drink a whole cup. When some church members give me some grape juice, saying it is good for health, or there is also another pastor in another church who is giving me such a thing, and I have never taken those things. The secretarial bureau will take care of them by themselves. Even when they come to my residence, I can't drink them. They are too strong for me. I'm not saying that I don't drink them because it is sin to drink those juices, but I feel they are too strong for me. Even at restaurants, I can't even drink Coke or 7-Up straight. They are too strong for me. So that's why I mix Coke and 7-Up together. Then it becomes a little bit smoother. I drink just uh, half a cup. I can't even finish one whole cup. God is telling us to cut it off from the beginning so that we will not even get tempted. In Leviticus chapter 10 verse 9, God tells the descendants of Aaron, Do not drink wine or intoxicating drink, you nor your sons with you, when you go into the tabernacle of meeting, lest you die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. The people of Israel live in hot weather in the desert, so they drink this to get over with heat and thirst. They drank wine that way. But when they go into the tabernacle of meeting, they must not drink lest they die. God is very strict about this. It shall be a statute forever throughout their generations. Also in Numbers chapter 6 or in Proverbs chapter 31 verse 4, God strictly prohibits kings or those who are sanctified from alcohol. If people have good conscience, they can realize by themselves it is not right 
to get drunk in the sight of God. Even the worldly people will not be drunk when they have to show respect to somebody or when they have to meet with senior people. So how much more do we have to be careful before God? Today we live as God's children before Him. Also the Holy Spirit is dwelling in our body, taking it as His sanctuary. Therefore, if we accept the Lord and receive the works of the Holy Spirit, we can feel that it is not right to get drunk. Before I came to know God, I spent my days drinking. I finally became an alcoholic. People say, you can quit drinking, but you cannot quit smoking. But I said, I couldn't quit drinking, although I could quit anything. I enjoyed it very much. I drank every day, even when I was eating. That's why I finally became an alcoholic. I could not endure the pains of diseases and despair and sorrow of my heart without alcohol. But after I accepted the Lord, I did not either drink or smoke when I went to church, even though nobody taught me the truth. I didn't drink or smoke even when I didn't know it was bad. Even when nobody was saying anything, I already felt in my conscience that I could not go to church after drinking. I didn't drink or smoke in the morning and for the whole day, only after I came back from church after evening service, I would drink and smoke since I didn't know anything at that time. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 says, And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. As said, I hope you will always be filled with the new wine of the Holy Spirit and lead your life in faith. The last work of the flesh we'll consider is Reveille's. According to Webster's Dictionary, Reveille is noisy parting or merrymaking. In this world, there are people who completely indulge themselves in lustful things and drinking, not being able to come out of it. Some sisters in our Light and Salt mission, which is a mission group for those who work in department stores and distribution businesses, after their work is over at night, they would go to nightclubs because for the whole day they had to talk to the customers. They would get drunk and dance. They tell me what they used to do before. Now they don't do it in the Lord. But that was dissipation. They got drunk and danced with men and women together. They cannot take any responsibility or perform a job. They cannot do the duty of man. For example, if the father of a family is addicted to gambling, not caring for his family, how much would his family members suffer? When I was a child, I saw something like the following. In the countryside, after they harvest a year's crops, or after they receive the wage for that year, people would gather and gamble. But some of them do not play for fun, but get into it too much that they lose their whole year's wage. I don't know whether there are such workers today, but before, they would contract for one year. Some rich families had their own workers. They would contract for one whole year. For the yearly wage, the workers would receive maybe five or ten big sacks of rice. If there are many works to do, they would receive nine sacks of rice. They work hard for one year. 
They work day and night. After one year's farming is over, in autumn or in December or in January, they receive the wage. But there are many workers who lose all their yearly wage with gambling. How wasteful it is. They work so hard for one whole year, and after they receive the wage, they should save it. But they spend it gambling. Again, they work for another year. And they repeat the same thing again. There are quite a few of them who do that. They sometimes lose their house and all their assets. Some of them even sell their own family members to gamble. Sometimes they put down their wives as guarantee. They give their house document or documents of their fields or rice paddies. Sometimes, in order to stop gambling, they cut their fingers, but they still do it. If they do again, they cut their whole hand off. And I heard there were people who still gambled after that. How difficult it is to get gambling. But today I hear some people give themselves up to revelries due to expensive and luxurious goods. Some broadcasters said I did gambling. How ridiculous it is. Our members don't even touch any cards. Why should I gamble to take somebody else's money? Why would I covet somebody else's? Why do they broadcast falsehood? They purchase thousands or tens of thousands of dollars worth of bags, clothes, and accessories. They buy them with credit card without being careful and later become unable to pay back. There are some married couples who get divorced because the wife spent too much with credit card. Because they cannot pay the card bills, some of them become robbers or some others commit suicide. That's why I am urging you members not to use credit cards. If you use it well, it is useful and beneficial. But many people don't use it well. When they use cards, they feel like they are buying things for free. Also, they get cash service and their debt piles up. Later, with such high interest rate, they cannot pay it back. Especially if students or young adults have debt of tens of thousands of dollars, how will they pay it back? So some of them steal or do other things. They will also become credit defaulters. I helped quite a few of them. I told them they should never do it again. They don't have the ability to pay it back and they suffer so much. I asked them how much they owe and paid it back for them. Then I asked them after some months whether they still use the card and whether they still have the debt. Then one person said she still had the debt, so I paid it back for her again. But later she said she still had the debt. I asked her whether she was not telling me the truth on how much debt she has, but she didn't lie to me. Why did she still have debt? She said, she helped somebody else with the money I gave to her. How naive she is. I gave her for her to pay back her debit, but she didn't pay it back but helped another person. Later, I saw the one whom she helped, and she is driving a good car. She was in a situation to be a credit defaulter but she gave the money to help another person. But that person was driving a good car. So how could it be helping another person? There is such a naive person, too. 
So I helped some of those who are suffering because of their debt with credit cards. You shouldn't fall into this kind of hardship. Some people lose all their fortune by investing in stock market. They even borrow from other people and lost all the money. How pitiful it seems. They don't have the ability to pay back their debt. They are not even able to pay their interest with their salary. I feel too sorry for them and I am helping some of them. I am telling them to be faithful before God from now and never do it again. I helped those who are working hard for the kingdom of God. But I feel very sorry these things were caused by wrongful desire. So, when I talk about these things, please do not be offended in any way. I cannot help but talk about it because so many people are suffering from those things. How foolish are these things? Only because they cannot control their desire and act in dissipation, they fall into the way of disaster and death. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification. God's children should never dirty themselves in dissipation. If we keep on living in revelries, even after accepting the Lord, we can neither give our heart to God nor receive the strength to throw away sins and become sanctified. Even though we attend church, it is just coming to church. And we cannot have true faith with which we can be saved. Of course, I believe that our members who are longing for New Jerusalem are not going after lustful things of this world and falling into revelries. But I want you to check this to become more perfect. Am I being faithful in all God's house? Am I not neglecting one aspect, concentrating on only one thing? Namely, I want you to check whether you are doing all your duties in all aspects. Also, please check how you are spending your time given to you each day. Also, I want you to check how you are using your time in your daily lives. If you are saving your time and are being faithful in all God's house, God's grace and strength will pour down upon you when you pray in the Daniel prayer meeting. You can feel in your heart that God is pleased with you. I urge you to be faithful in all God's house, in your church, home, workplace, and every place you belong to. Let me conclude the message. Viewing audiences, so far we have looked at the works of the flesh in five sessions. Of course, there are many other works of the flesh, as said at the end of verse 21 and the like. But if you have thrown away what I explained to you so far, you must have become a man who follows the desire of the Holy Spirit and naturally you will not commit other works of the flesh either. You will not commit any sin with action and you will throw away sinful nature in you too. We should become holier day after day as God's holy children. You have learned about many kinds of the works of the flesh and can children of God commit these sins? If you believe in God, you will naturally love Him. And if you love Him, you will keep His commands. So will you be able to commit the things that cannot be accepted by God? That's why God says, the works of the flesh are evident and those who commit these sins will not inherit the kingdom of God but go to hell. 
when you are a new believer, right after you accept the Lord, and while you are at the first level of faith, most of you commit the works of the, of the flesh. But as you learn the Word of God, you learn that God is your Father, and in His love He gave us His one and only Son to let Him be crucified for our sins. So you know why God is love and how much He loves us and how much our Lord and Savior Jesus loves us. As we learn these things, we believe God's Word and we come to love Him. Because we love Him, we keep His commands. To keep His commands, we cut out the works of the flesh. That's how we go into the second level of faith. At the second level of faith, you sometimes commit sins and repent and turn away. Finally, you cut out all kinds of works of the flesh completely. That is when you go into the third level of faith. At the third level, you struggle against the sinful natures in your heart. After you lead a Christian life for a handsome amount of time, you are supposed to be at the third level of faith. If you are a deacon, you should definitely be at the third level of faith at least. But let's say a person at the third level of faith commits a work of the flesh. Then it means he has gone down to the first level of faith. So what does the Bible say about this? It is to crucify the Lord all over again. He was crucified for us because of our sins and He bought us with His own blood. That's how we were forgiven of our sins. If those who know this very well, after cutting out all commitment of sins, commit those works of the flesh again, it is to crucify the Lord all over again. For this kind of person, there is no salvation. He knows the truth, what sin and righteousness are, and that there is judgment. Knowing all these things, if he willfully commits sins, God does not give the spirit of repentance. He will remain as a sinner. That's why God says there is no salvation for these people. The works of the flesh that I have explained to you for many weeks are evident. Even the worldly people know that these are great sins. How much more in God's sight? How much would these things anger God? So God's children who believe in Him should never commit these works. But as for new believers who are new to faith, they are in the process of cutting out these works of the flesh as they learn and understand the Word of God. If they cut out works of the flesh, they will go into the second level of faith, and if they cut, cut them out completely, they will go into the third level. Now they fight against the sinful natures in their heart, and if they get rid of this too, they go into the fourth level of faith. If they are faithful in all God's house, they are at the fifth level of faith. They can get into the city of New Jerusalem. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You gained the promise of salvation and glory in the Lord who has saved us. But that promise can come true only to those who obey God's word with true faith. I urge you to get rid of all the dirty things of spirit and flesh until that promise is made true perfectly. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you will finish your preparation to meet the Lord as children of light who obey God fully. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. 
the work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing part of God. Hallelujah, the Almighty God of love. Lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorch by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleanse with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five versera and the six entrails, each joint and all nerves, tissues and cells. Manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases and newly discovered diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer and skin cancer. Age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high part of creation, May all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive. Rejoin broken bones and make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened, darkness go away. May the light come, Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life Go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration and prayer. Add faith, hope and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters, and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding, and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God, I have received his answers, and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
아버지요 감사합니다 멈추지 않는 그도 놀라운 권능으로 온 세계를 품으시고 만민을 인도하신 아버지 감사하나이다 성령의 불같은 역사로 어둠을 몰아내시고 공의로 비추시는 끝이 없는 아버지의 사랑의 공간이 목자를 통하여 영혼들에게 펼쳐진 아이다 폭발적인 목자의 권능으로 권능! 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 멈추지 않는 권능 권능! 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 아버지 주신 권능! 